I started off with taking very detailed notes and they were very, very, very beautiful notes and they were very impressive and people were impressed, but they were not effective. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel where I talk tech and productivity and making it as fun as possible during the process because everybody wants to have fun, right? Today's video is going to be about the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam which i passed um a month ago so i'm just going to be sharing my experience and top tips and this video is going to be answering five questions question number one what is the aws certified cloud practitioner exam question number two how much experience should you have for preparing for the exam question number three what is structure of the exam Question number four, how should you study for the exam? And question number five, how do you know when you are ready for the exam? I've left all the timestamps below, so feel free to skip ahead to what section's most relevant for you. To give a little bit of background, I work as a tech consultant, but before I started my role about eight months ago, I had limited experience on actual tech jobs. I learned to code and everything. I'd heard of the cloud and iCloud, which I store my pictures on but I never really knew what it was genuinely I thought it was like something to do with satellites and the cloud I was wrong I was very very wrong and if you were like me then just really simply what the cloud is is that instead of companies having their own sort of physical data centers they pay companies like amazon which have lots of data centers and benefit from economies of scale to host their servers this works out for amazon and this also works out for those companies as well and according to amazon the aws certified cloud practitioner exam is intended for individuals who can effectively demonstrate an overall knowledge of AWS cloud independent of a specific job role. So this is not tied to any job. Um, and from what I've heard, it's not enough to get you a job in the cloud, but it does show that you do understand the principles and it's a good foundation for anything else that you wanted to do if you decided to take your career in that direction. Question number two. How much experience should you have before preparing for this exam? So again, according to Amazon, you should have six months or equivalent of active engagement with the cloud, with exposure to cloud design, implementation, and operation. But do not let this put you off. The main reason I'm gonna say that is because I know quite a few people who've never worked in the cloud who got in the certification. I'm so sure that if you are ready to put the time in, you can get this certification certification comfortably. Question number three, what is the structure of the exam? It's a 19 minute paper with 65 questions. Questions come in two formats, either multiple choice, so you pick one answer, or multiple response, where you have a question and you pick the most suitable answers from the list. So there are four main domains in here. The first is cloud concepts. This is essentially you understanding why the cloud is a viable solution for customers. The second domain is security and compliance, which speaks about how data is kept secure in the cloud. There's a shared responsibility model which is security in the cloud is your job um, managing managing the resources and security of the cloud is Amazon's job securing the physical locations the third domain is technology this has the most questions and it's mostly about Amazon specific services that enable you to achieve business value. The third is billing and pricing and this is just about how Amazon bills its customers and how you can take charge of your billing and, and costs which is exciting. Now we're on to question number four which is how to prepare for the exam. For me this was by far the most sort of important important part of this. I do not like to study and studying be boring. I cannot do it. I will hate myself. I will not study. I will just not do what I'm supposed to do. Every time I've ever had an exam, I always think to myself, what is the best way to make this effective to learn, but also just like not 
boring i get really fidgety so i can't actually just like listen or watch stuff or whatever so i always have to devise a strategy to make things more fun more competitive for myself and that's how i basically get through exams and qualifications i started off with taking very detailed notes and they were very 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 beautiful notes and they were very impressive and people were impressed but they were not effective not for my knowledge and not for my time especially just because of the type of exam this was. I do know people who did take physical notes but personally it did not work for me and I spent, to be honest, all the time I could have spent actually studying and preparing for the exam making beautiful notes. At some point I said enough is enough, this is beautiful but I must let you go. And I also have a full-time job and doing this with a full-time job is just a little bit harder so... I needed to make sure that what I was doing was extremely time efficient. This is a system that I developed that worked wonders for me and honestly every day I saw myself getting better until the point where I was so so comfortable to take the exam. Stage one of this is the content binge. You know we're trying to make it fun, binging is like something you do that's like fun and it's like you know binging on Netflix. So there are a ton of resources out there and I will tell you a bit more about the resources I use but essentially what this part of the process is, is finding a course on it, finding a resource on it. I just like watching it and listening to it. You can take notes if you want to, but for me that slowed me down because it takes me ages to write anything. It was just taking in knowledge basically at a rapid rate. So the first course I use or resource I use was the A Cloud Guru course. I found this actually quite nice because it was interactive. They had an interactive web page. It was actually pretty fun. It was about 10 hours of content and 159 like little mini videos. And I thought the way it was broken up was really nice because I didn't have to commit to too long to learning something that day. The only downside of this is that it does cost money, but they do do a seven day trial and it's like, I think $35 for a month. And to be honest, I think that in that five week period you can do it and if you're really ambitious and have like seven days free, you could also like learn all the contents in those seven days of the free trial as well. The second course I did was on YouTube and it was free, it was just a four hour long video that went over the major things you need to know and I just like doing this because after I've done one course I sometimes like hearing about things from a different perspective by doing another course and so one of my colleagues told me about this course thank you very much and it was it was really nice to just kind of fill in gaps or hear things in different ways so I did this and it was about four hours of listening honestly speaking I was like folding my laundry vacuuming my room just doing random stuff while I was listening to it but I was just trying to pay attention to it and personally I find that if I'm actually doing stuff while I'm listening to something it helps me pay more attention and zone out less and yeah just like have more fun with it the last content binge I did and I didn't watch everything all the way through right it was just like things that I was interested in was the Amazon provided one and honestly this is by far the best course at sort of taking you through the principles they use really really lovely analogies and they really follow through with the analogies there were different people on the course and because it was amazon who was doing the course i was like yeah they know what they're saying because they made this course the only thing i would say was that it was not as detailed as the other courses the economy one was really really detailed but this wasn't as detailed but it really really just helped me fully understand those concepts and you know sometimes when you study for an exam and you think oh my gosh i'm gonna forget all of the stuff after the exam what that course did is that it really really like set in some like long-term like rem memory for me i also want to say that i actually didn't like do all these courses back to back to back i used stage two which i'm about to tell you kind of in between and played about with sort of like the structure of things so i found the structure that worked for me so the next stage after you've had your content binge is your active recall stage the scientists have said that active recall and actually trying to pull out information from your brain is one of the most effective ways to learn i spend a lot less time sort of taking notes and invest that time into active recall the perfectionist in me wants to say oh i just want to know every single thing 800 percent right before i do any questions so i can perform best but i've had to push her to the side and say like 
it doesn't make any sense. Get in the content, you're not gonna know all of it, you're not gonna know all of it perfectly, and then do the active recall stage. And through this active recall stage, you will know what you know and what you don't know, and then you can be a lot more specific about actually finding out what you need to learn and relearn. I started off with tutorial dojos and you can get those on Udemy. They're slightly harder to the actual exam from my experience, but they were a really, really good way to, to learn and know what you didn't know. All of the papers like were really sort of not different because the exam has like, you know, specific content, but they were varied enough to like keep on learning as you did more and more papers, which was really, really good. The method that I took was step one, start the paper, right? There's never going to be a good time. Just start the paper, get the paper out, start the paper. Okay? You just want to answer every question to the best of your abilities. If you are not sure of an answer and you're like, oh, and even if you're not sure of the other answers, so you might really strongly believe that A is the right answer, but you actually really don't even know what B is mark all those questions for review. And then once you're done, you get your score. And I remember the first time I did this, I got 57% and I was like, ah, my African parents are not going to be proud. But, 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 it's fine, right? Because that's just your starting point. This is the real, real study time. After I did that, okay, got my starting off point, okay, 57%, that's all okay. All right, so you go back to the questions and you review the questions in two categories, all the questions you mark. As you go over those questions, do not rush it. This is the most important time. Understand why you got it wrong, right? Even the ones you got right and you marked for review, really understand why the other services or the other options were not the right option. The second category of questions you need to look at is the ones that you thought were right but were actually wrong. It's so important to know what you don't know. I'm lazy, right? And I'm a lazy studier so it's gonna take a lot for me to actually like review these questions like carefully and you know in the best way possible. So I set myself a competitive task. After I've gotten a paper, right, if I didn't get 80% in the first time round, right, I have to do the paper a second time, right? And that second time I have to get 90% and if I don't get 90%, I'll do that paper again. And that is not fun. So I was really, really careful about the things that I missed, why I missed them, and just really understanding things a little bit better and then taking the paper again, right? And that really allows you to get the most out of those resources. I will link the papers I used in Udemy. Also, if you did decide to get the ACOG group membership, they also have a practice test at the end. The questions are quite good, but I don't like the fact that you can't like, see all the tests and go back to tests you've done before. Every time you do a test, they give you a new set of questions. You will see questions you've seen before. I think they just have a bank and then they pull 65 questions from that bank. The last set of questions I used, which I would say were the closest, 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 closest to the exam. I even saw like literally an exact same question that I did in the, those practice questions at the exam were the Wiz Lab questions. The Wiz Lab questions were really, really good. Um, in terms of really preparing me and making me comfortable going into the exam. You might be finding out that there are questions from a particular section or a particular topic that you just are consistently not doing well on. I would say in this situation, take a step back and revisit the content binge, right? And try not to fold your laundry while you're doing it this time. AWS also has white papers, which explain things really well, and their website, which actually explains services really well as well. So if there's something you're consistently not getting right, really just take some time to really understand it. I'm gonna be doing a video on services that I commonly confused. If you are interested in kind of doing a deeper dive or seeing how I do a deep dive, um, Keep your eye out for that video and subscribe so that you get a notification once it comes out. The last question for today is, how do you know you're ready for the exam? This was simple for me. I said to myself, I need to be getting 80% on first attempts. And when I got to the point where I was averaging 80% on first attempts, I did the exam and I got over 80% on the exam, which is about 
over 800, over 1000. And I was comfortable. I knew like that I was going to do well on the exam. I wasn't nervous because I had practiced. I had gone through questions. I had really, really like, I really understood the exam, what the exam was looking for. Um, and that's what enabled me to pass. If you found this useful, give this video a thumbs up, please. And if you like this content, then feel free to subscribe. And if you have your exam coming up, good luck if you haven't booked your exam book it now um and yeah let me know how it goes in the comments and let me know any study tips you have in the comments see you guys later